Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. If you know better, you won't be here. It's because you don't know. So pick up your phone and log in. Use that phone and get the lyrics of the song. You don't know how to use it. That's why we are here. We are to be trained. This is simpler than digital ecosystem. <laughs> are we there? Pastor Dan, are you there? Where's Pastor Feludu? Are you there? And you sing from your head. All right, if you are there, just wave your hand at me. All right, if you are not there, you can share with uh, somebody. in us for us in Jesus name very quickly let's get a few minutes of reviewing what we did in our various uh, sessions music ministry somebody from that session to tell us what we did other than the leader anybody from the music ministry Okay, Sister Umaran. I know the name is Umaran, but your husband called it Umaran. <laughs> Umaran. Where is he? He needs to be here to hear his name being corrected. All right, go ahead. Praise God. So we talked about the music, the minister, and the ministration. And in the music, we talk about songs that are inspiring, songs that will take people to another level. You know, not just singing to make people happy. And um, if your songs, the lyrics, sometimes we sing, and the people cannot hear the wordings of what we're singing, then the best thing is to project it so that people can read the wordings because some things we say, the way we pronounce things, people might not understand it, they might read another meaning. But when it's projected, the congregation can see and they can gain from what we're singing. And then we talk about the minister. The minister needs to be trained um, not only himself or herself, but train those that 
are in the Please pay village. attention, everybody. Uh, the reason why we are doing this is you are in a different section. You need to know what happened because all the various sections of the seminars or the breakouts affects you, affects me, affects all of us, so that we can all benefit uh, from what's happened in those areas. So please, uh, let's not uh, talk or chat, but pay attention and take notes. Yes, go ahead, ma'am. Yeah, we talk about the minister. <clears throat> First of all, the minister needs to be saved. Because when you are saved, then you can bring God's word to the heart of the people. The minister. What the ministers we're talking about now? The, the choir ministers. So basically, what they're saying is, anyone singing in your church must be genuinely converted. Some of you have people just in the name of wanting to sing. You just pack people there. It shouldn't be. Last convention, I don't know the location again. Somebody still with, is it wedding ring or jewelry or something like that? I don't remember now. Was in the choir. While gold is not an evidence of conversion, that is not wearing it or something you are born again. Are we together? But if you are going to be a worker, it's a higher calling. There are qualifications for becoming a worker. Amen. So don't go tell people that, okay, because you see how you're going on, you're not born again. That's not what you are saying. They may be more born again than the, than the person without jewelry. But to be a worker in our church, you is part of what you give up. Praise God. But then beyond that, there must be clear evidence of conversion. Many people in our choir are fighting, animosity and competition. All those are clear evidences of lack of conversion. Thank you. So the minister must be converted, must be consecrated, must be committed, must be conscientious, must be trained himself. I thought you were going to give me another con. Praise the pastor. <laughs> Praise God. And competent. Thank you. Competent. That's thank you. Yeah, yes. All right. Now, the last point. The last point is the ministration. The ministration. So, we used um, the example, the leader used the example of the dedication of the temple where the choir sang and the glory of the Lord. And came. the glory came down. Thank you. Let's put our hand together. The glory came down. That is the ultimate purpose of our ministry and ministration. If we can bring down the glory, we have wasted time and life. If people can hear us, how then are they able to, going to be able to connect with heaven? And uh, Sister Motesho, about two, three years ago, I gave you an assignment about having our um, music, uh, what do I call it now? Ministry. And I told you about composing songs, original with us. I'm here to hear from you till this moment. It's still coming. After we have produced one here. Praise God. For the the music team in the Mid-Atlantic, let's put our hands together for them. Those of you that were not at the last convention, we have our first Deeper Life music production. Amen? And we launched it. If you are not here at that convention, can you please stand up? You are not at the last convention in Kingston. Stand up. Some of you don't even remember you, whether you were there or not. All right. I made you to stand up because you are going to launch your own before you leave. Praise God. Some launch with $2,000. Some launch with uh, $500. Uh, some launch with uh, uh, so we'll come to that. Pastor Fabi, you have it there, right? Just lift up and let them see.
and the music is now on the, the social media actually amen actually those of you standing go and collect one go and collect one we'll know how much you pay later on all right praise god so we are still waiting for those of you in the south south and um, basically what am i getting there pay attention here well, you can collect yours but please make sure you the name of our choir group here in the u.s is deeper voices is it deeper or deeper light voices am i right what's what's the name of the cd on the on the cd deeper light voices praise god so what we are doing is to expand ourselves to stretch ourselves and i told the brethren that all the songs we are singing people got inspired they listened to god they put these things together if they had not devoted and consecrated themselves there would be nothing for us to sing praise god and so by god's grace they worked together it took time but they came out with they came up with something and it will be well with us in jesus name this crusade that is going on you know we started this way back this became another open eye for us the to get an artist if you know what we have to go through uh to get a single artist is an enormous task thank god the first time we got the money to get the next one has been an issue an issue because we can't just bring in any artists are you with me we have our requirements and qualifications and how many of you noticed that we, we advertise uh, wrong can only for the last one and then we have to pull the ad out because after we did that we discovered some things and within a day or two that we discover those things as a that it is time for us to begin to develop our own artists in deeper life. And by God's grace, we are working on that. I have a team I'm working with now. One is in Abuja. The other one is in India. And we began to work privately, quietly. And I told them, knowing the way our system is we'll get to a point before we we'll bring this out we didn't know that what happened last month was going to happen and so eventually when kenali was out we have to fall back to our own secret plan you see where vision comes in you see where it's necessary that you are proactive in what you are doing and so we have to do a quick uh whatever you call it amen and one of the days i was talking with sister gladys sister kofos and um, brother emmanuel sister kofo are you around okay brother emmanuel and it was late in the night in nigeria they came up with some songs and i said no those songs will not fly and so very quickly we came up with songs from here they were on the line as i was talking with them i was online and all the rest brother money was with me sister kofo was on the line sister gladys was on the line i was talking with them on raising up our own artists when they called me from nigeria that okay they are practicing i need to see what they're doing approve this and that and i said uh -uh. 
All this will not work. To cut a long story short, by God's grace, they ministered. And thank God our people are here. I told them that my people are actually on the line with me. So let them be part of the meeting. They made meaningful, wonderful contributions. Put your hands together for us, brethren. So whatever you saw produced in Nigeria was actually a combination of us and them over there. Uh, and so what do we do? That very day I told them and I told them that I'm going to call uh, Bro Victor Chuku uh, and Bro Kayade uh, Karunwe so that in the south we start doing something also. Even though Sister Bumi disappointed me. She has not disappointed. Where is she? She ran away. <laughs> She's not the bad. She said they are still working on it. At least before Jesus comes. Amen. So, my goal and plan is not to put all our eggs in one basket. We want to start doing something from the south, doing something from here. Do we understand? As a matter of fact, I told you that I got a call around 3 something a.m. It is from that thing. Now, they want me to minister to them in Abuja tomorrow morning. And so, let us think ahead and plan ahead. So, you are hearing now, Pastor Chuku, that we need to start, we need our own original. And then, at the point, we now collapse everything together, and then we have one. Eventually, we're going to get to other regions. Are we together? But people say that charity begins from where? From home. If your vision is not clear, nobody is going to run with it. Let's get our acts together from here first. And there are quite a lot of things that God has helped us to initiate that is flying in the nation now. This is just another one that God is coming up with in Jesus' name. And so, music is very important and very essential. I told them, and of course when I say Nigeria, that's just our headquarters, but it's actually a global something. Overseers from Europe, from Asia, from uh, all over. And I said, if not an embassy that we ended up using, had not been given the room to develop himself where he is, we wouldn't have him. So we need to develop our own people. And please don't run your mouth, don't go too far. Because not everybody has the understanding that we have. Are we together? Not, not everybody is thinking ahead of time. Let's see what we can do privately, quietly, which we are still doing with the brethren back home some i can tell you are still fighting that i ah, have no this no that we don't want to trouble with anybody uh but when it comes out well god will be glorified amen and so if you are good with writing a song um sister Dupu is not here when i spoke with her she said pastor i think she was actually crying that this is what god has given her but she let it go after I spoke with her, she went and composed a song, wonderful song. Wonderful song. Uh, so this is what we want to do. What do you have to bring to the table? You bring it. What do I have? I bring it. Everything together. And by God's grace, uh, we are going to move this church forward. I need a better one. Yeah. Amen. That's about music. And um, pastors, please, uh, you need to get involved. Where is Pastor Yemi? Okay. He's in his department, media department. Stand up, let them see you. He's up there. Come down, come down. Since they won't break their neck because of you. I'm bringing him up for a purpose. For goodness sake. Of course, he knows things I need to correct in his church, I correct, but I appreciate what he is doing. Why? He gets directly, personally involved. He knew nothing about this media thing. 
when I first met him. Am I right? It was at New York. We hired somebody. What's the name of that guy? You can't remember. It's been a while. The person we hired was actually messing up the whole thing. But he was working with the person with other people. It was from there he picked it up. And then he built on it. And now he's a guru in it. And in his church, he gets directly involved. He doesn't rest. He doesn't rest. Why am I saying this? Please, Pastor, to see a change, get personally involved. And I've told you before that the pastor is who now in the church? If you still remember. Huh? Say it again. Thank you. You are the section ahead of every department in your church. Including the bathroom. You are the head cleaner. Am I communicating? For goodness sake, I'm not going to try to do what I don't do myself. If you want to see things happen, if you want to really see your church grow, throw yourself in. Make uh, how the, the song, uh, give, your be give of your best to the master. Give of the strength of your youth. Uh, what's the next line? Throw your glowing adder, the best part of you, into the battle for the truth. Amen? So please, Pastor, don't just say, go do this and then you stay back. Yesterday, to arrange this place, Pastor Charles didn't say, I'm a doctor of chemistry. Chemistry is there, but this is table now. He had to come to be part of the arrangement here. We are up here. Don't we like it? Of course, he doesn't know anything about decoration. If you tell him to decorate, <laughs> you will walk in and run out. But his presence makes a big difference. And those that are working for him, are we together, please? Your presence makes a big difference. Music is very important. Pay attention to what they are singing. Don't just... Oh, I'm sorry, sir. You are free to go, Pastor. Pay attention to what your boy is doing. Whether praise worship, whether regular hymn, whether choir ministration. Uh, last Sunday, I wasn't here. Pay attention. They sang a praise worship here. Up to now, I've not even listened. They just said, your choir. I got a call, and I told my people... People are listening to us from all over the world. And it's not the first time I'm getting calls. Sometimes I got a call from this continent, from that continent. And I got a call and I was told that, who is that person that led your praise worship? No, they just say choir. That it was awful, it was terrible, it was bad, it was... I felt ashamed. Are you with me? So I had to call, I think, I, Pastor Charles, you are the one I called, right? I called Pastor Charles and I said, on Sunday, this is what happened. To cut a long story short, you would think it's just here, but the thing is out there. It's part of why I said, yo, yo, what do you say you, you build now? Your website, please, don't build it to again. Amen? And by the way, we have somebody that works with the government of America, highly connected in our midst. Husband and wife, actually the husband used to work in the White House. They are no more, but I think they are working with the military uh, defense of the United States right now. The wife said they can help you with the building of your website. 
Sister Opera, can you stand up? And so, those of you that know about building websites, this is what we're going to do. We're going to have a team in that area. Are we together? So, we want to, be able, we want to begin to departmentalize everything, and then we know if we have this issue, we know who to call upon. So, if you know you have knowledge of website, can you please stand up? Anybody? That's Sister Babatala, right? Very good. Any other person? Ah, Pastor Victor, you thought, I thought you can be well right. You know that, that, that? All right. Okay. If we don't have enough of us, we'll see what we can do with those that we have. Amen. We'll get started. And then I have somebody that built ours. It's like a son to me when I mean son, spiritual son. He's not with deeper life, but he does a very good job. And he's very good with, uh, give me the word I used it before. Huh? Graphics. It's very good with graphics. So I'll connect you. So Sister Para, Sister uh, Comfort, Pastor Victor, who is that? Oh, oh, Pastor Bayeri, you became a masquerade. <laughs> now I can see your face. <laughs> Praise God. Okay, so you know about website too. Okay, very good. So we're going to, please help me get the names of the people and then we'll talk later on. And so whoever needs websites, but what we're going to do first is we'll build one for me to see first. And then when I see that one, but what kills website many times is the content. If you don't have content, and you don't have something to make it functional, active, it becomes a dominant site. If every time people go to your website is the same thing they are seeing all again and again and again, they won't go there again. Are we together? And even here in this our website is becoming that now because for, for some time I really don't have time. And as a pastor, you have to create time for it. If you can't create the time, don't even bother building it. I'm telling you the truth. Thank you, sir, sir, master. You, you may have your seat. Okay, so money for ministry. Pastor Dennis. Yes, sir. Uh, anybody from that department that can tell us what you summarize in two minutes what you discuss there money for ministry I can't see the hand oh okay praise the Lord He said within months. Okay, within months, they pay you know thousands of dollars. He didn't, he didn't tell I was expecting him to tell us. That's that's private. <laughs> and then he said something. He said they needed chair in the church, and then he went and you know researched for uh, you know how much the chair would cost. So he, he went to the church and he told them, okay, we need so so, so number of, of chairs. You, how many chairs can you buy? This one said ten. This one say five. This one say, okay, say, okay, this is the price. You say you're going to buy ten. You buy ten. You buy five. And before you know it, there was chair in the church. As simple as that. Let's put our hands together. <laughs> Wisdom. Amen. So, I actually learned from him that it's not, you don't just always go, you know, go before the church and you're saying money, money, money. If you're saying money, also you have to make them to know what you are spending the money for. Tell them this is this is what you are going to. This project is for this, and if you tell them, they will, they will 
actually help you. Praise the Lord. Again, you don't just say, we need money to we need money to What is the money for? People buy into vision. People buy into vision. Share the vision with the church. And you will shut. And please pay attention to this. What has helped us here is, when we say we want to do something, we'll do exactly what we say we want to do. And people feel happy. When they see what to do with their money, next time you come to them, will they respond to you? They will respond to you. They will surely respond to you. God bless you. Um, and so please understand, let me tell you something again about money. If you have things to do, you see, that is one strategy. Distribute it. Another thing is, when we were told to contribute money towards Lagos projects, even though some of you pastors have not been faithful in that, but God will forgive your unfaithfulness and give you the grace to be faithful. Because we cannot continue in sin and ask for grace to continue or to abound. Amen. In our region together, we're supposed to come up with $1 million. How do you do that? We never reached $1 million before. When we started having convention, what we normally budget was $100,000. And to raise $100,000 is always like, a, you box me, I box you. Now, $1 million. By the way, our convention our region alone will spend much more than that by God's grace. Amen. And we have gotten to a point now that when we finish convention, we have surplus. I thought to put your hands together. <laughs> we break it down into chunks. And those of you that know, I'm just telling you how to raise money in your church now. It's big. When you mention the big money, everybody will run away. But do your homework. And I've done this at the national level and it's helping us too, by God's grace. Break it down. And how many of you remember how much each person was to pay out of $1 million? How much? Uh, how, how much? 1,500. Which one is easier for you to hear? Between one five and one million? Will it be easier for you to come up with 1,500? And that's exactly what we're doing. And with that distribution will come up. If everybody does it faithfully, we'll get our one million dollars. Amen. And by God's grace, some of us pledged $10,000. And they paid. Some pledged $5,000 towards Lagos Project. And they paid. You know the people that have not paid? Huh? Who are the people? 1500 God will help you. Turn to another and say, God will deliver you. Turn to another person and say, God will deliver you. He that is faithful in little... We pay too much. Many of us are still poor today. And we are struggling. Some of you, you have the money, but you are struggling. Pastor Chupa, which one did you handle? Engaging the elites. I will get to that so that I can quickly release you to, to go and come back. Are we together, please? Faithfulness. Faithfulness. Some of us, we don't take it. And because you are not faithful... You made your whole congregation to be unfaithful too. And God is not happy. And the headquarter church, they are not getting your money, whether here or there, they're not getting your money to spend for anything personal. It's for God's glory. And some of you say, and hey, we have this to do in our church, we have that to do in our church. Please shut up. You are there in that job because somebody started the main work. We are co-laborers with our leaders. I need an amen. 
Without them, there will be no us. And when a higher law, whether at the regional level or at the national level or the world headquarter level, when a higher law and a lower law meets, which one bows to the other? The lower law. Are we not spiritual? We should be matured in spiritual things. The lower law bows to the higher one. And what we do here is, if we have any plan or projects going on, and then there is an order from Lagos, I put a hold on whatever we are doing. They come first. And if there is anything we are doing within the region, and then nationally, we are to do something, I put a hold on the one in the region. Because now, all the regions are together, and we have to do this one thing, and so we do it. But if in your local area, and faithfulness comes in little, little ways, we say we should do this, eh, I have my own need, we have your own need. I pray you will not die in need. Simple obedience. Tests of obedience. It shall be well. How do we connect with the elites? Pastor Wango Paul. Who is in your class? Anybody in that class? Yes, sir. I thought they were out there, but I, they are even within our churches. And in describing them, who they are, they are more educated, they tend to have more money, they are more exposed, they are more connected, and things like that. They are beyond the, an average member of the church. But we need them to further the cause of the ministry. But the challenge is, how do we approach these people? Because they come with different attributes than the rest of us. I'm sorry, Pastor, let me stop you right there. Now that you are saying that, I need the two of you to connect me with the top military brass in the defense department. Now that we're talking about connecting with the elites. Amen. Done. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Go ahead. I don't want to forget that because all the while, I forgot. I've been wanting that. But now that we are discussing this, then I remember. How do we connect with them? Some of them, they are outspoken. Some of them, they are very reserved. They come with different approaches. But the way we do things generally is not going to work with them. It takes us to understand who the individual elite is. How do we connect with them? How do we present ourselves to them? Some of them, might, we might actually need to visit them one-on-one, -on -one, but they emphasize the need for us to be careful. So it doesn't look as if we are kind of, you know, kowtowing to them as it were. But we, we have to reach out to them. Some of them, we made an example of somebody who's kind of arrogant as it were, in quote, and they said, have you been to my house? And, and when he went to his house, actually he was impressed by what he saw. But we would have been scared before, why do I have to come to your house and things like that. We have to come with a different approach, humble ourselves to reach out to them. And how one, do they understand the scriptures? Uh, we may have to personalize our teaching to them as it were, take the gospel to them in their various homes. And when they come into the church, there's, a, there's something, some things, areas of need in the church where they can be very useful. And one thing we discussed at the end of the teaching, which I reached out to him, was we ourselves, we need to kind of present ourselves, carry ourselves, comport ourselves in such a manner that the elites will not look down on us. Because that's a challenge we've had over the years. People think it about like people that are just a bunch of heaven man, poor people. But no, we're not just heaven man. But it challenged us ourselves that could get into the associations. He took I, I picked up a business group that is We are not just heaven man, we are earthly counts. Yes. We count here on earth. And he told us to kind of connect with those people wherever we are. He's in a business group in his uh, city of Concord, North Carolina. And within that, that group, there's somebody who's connected to somebody who knows something who can do something. And just, we don't agree with Thank them. you. There is somebody who is connected with somebody. When we talk about networking, you will not know the real person you know, you need. But if you can begin with this person, this person with this person, 
this person may know that person. Before you know it, you are connected with that individual. Do we understand? Thank you so much. God bless you, sir. So, these elites understand we need them, they need us. And don't just jump out every time you want to go and preach the gospel to them. The conference we went for in Kansas, there is something I picked from that conference, which I also related for the GS. The guy, I don't remember the name now, the, the president now, Anderson, he made a statement. He said, you build relationship before partnership. Do you get that? Some of you don't get it yet. You know, you, you, you want them to do this, you want to know. He said, there must first of all be what? Relationship. Many of us will lack good relationship. And that thing stuck with me. If you don't know people, you can't tell them to do something for you. But when there is that relationship, you go there, they come to you, you interact together, you talk on stuff. A time will not come that the opportunity for the gospel will be, will be there. And then you present it. Praise the Lord. And so the elites, the politicians, do I tell you something? Pay attention here. Are you with me? I am looking for somebody right now that can connect me with Nancy Pelosi. That can connect me with uh, McConnell. Mitch McConnell. Yeah. Don't worry about the controversy. That's not what I need. I have my own goal. I need someone that, that can connect me with... Uh, With Chuma. I need somebody who can connect me with. By. Uh -uh, no, no, no. <laughs> you've, you've gone too far. <laughs> Please mention George Bush. <laughs> no. the ground. <laughs> anyway, if I can get someone to connect me with Biden, this is where I'm going. Pay attention here. This crusade we are doing, let's not just think how do I put it? I'm trying, trying to see the best word to use. This could say we are done. If I can get one of these people we mentioned, are you with me? To come out, just say a word for one minute. How many minutes? One minute. And say that we have listened to Pastor Dr. Kumoyi. And we can tell that he has the world. And it's a blessing to our generation. And I hereby recommend this crusade to all and sundry. What do you think is going to happen? The whole world. Well, Danish, he is not preaching. Don't worry about whether he's married ten times or not, like John McCain. That's not what we need. This is where we lack wisdom in ministry. Are we together, please? He's not a preacher. That's not his calling. And by the way, when, Pete, when Jesus went to Peter to use his boats, to preach. By the time he was done, what did Peter say? Who remember? 
He said, depart from me for all what? I'm a sinner. It wasn't the past life of Peter that Jesus needed. What did he need? His boats. After getting the boat of Peter, what did he get next? He got Peter. You see the hook and the bait in evangelism right now. Are we communicating? Some of us don't understand that there, for instance, if you see me now, sitting down with uh, Mitch McConnell, uh, pastor is vaccinating. He's becoming a politician because you don't understand. Amen? Because you don't understand. How many of you noticed the GS dress in this crusade? The man is refiring at 80. And listen to wisdom here. Pastor Charles said, uh, how did you say that uh, the GS will get a job at, uh, where do you call it? Goldman Sachs. Just with the dressing alone. Praise God. The man knows that he's old. And as soon as he shows up, the first thing they're going to be looking at is his gray hair. So he needs to distract you from his gray hair. <laughs> he needs to make himself appealing to this generation, the now generation they call it. Are we communicating? But if you don't understand, you say this year is not going worldly now. Amen. The gospel of the kingdom must be preached. Whatever it's going to take to get that done without you sinning or compromising with the world, we are going to do it in Jesus' name. And whatever we are talking about, this collaboration is something we have been doing. IFL. How many of you joined the church through IFL? One of you. Oh, it's a rubric. Okay, I see only, only one hand at the back. Okay, I think I see another one that is not very sure. Oh no, it's not being raised up. Anyway, okay, over there. So, we call it International Friendship League. And all these high people, top people, what do we do? We invite them for breakfast. We invite them for dinner, give them cookie and tea. Before you know it, some of them ended up in the church. Amen? What's well, so we can do from this part of the world? Let us do it to move the church forward. I need an amen. amen. We are moving forward. In the name of Jesus, you are moving forward. Praise the Lord. We need connection. You are free. But don't be long. We need connection with the elites. And the elites, we're not talking of just the politicians alone. We have ministers that are known in this country. I've been talking with Pastor Nyeka for some time on how to reach uh, this uh, the Baptist Church of Glenade. Jenkins. I need somebody who knows him. Even though we say we are minister, <laughs> minister, no minister. We all have our level. If you can reach people like that, what's the name of this one on uh, New Hampshire, is it? Rhode Island. Always. The issue is, these people here, they know all the people at the top. Are we communicating? That if you can penetrate to them, 
they become a means to an end. There is an artist we are trying to reach. We have written, we have emailed, we have blah, 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 blah. But then there is somebody, I won't tell you the name, from Nigeria, from where? This person is white here in America. This other person in Nigeria has connection with the person and then he just came from Nigeria and this other person now knows that he has connection with us. They now respond about to us. You see what I'm talking about? But if you are just there and say, eh, you become you, you come out, you, you, you sit in the seat of judgment, judging everybody. I pray God will not judge you. Minister's welfare. Anybody from that department? Minister's welfare. Yes, sir. Dr. Reggie. The minister has a lot of needs. The minister is alone most, most of the of time. time. The minister has a lot is of that true? I say, is that true? Okay. Uh, he has a lot of needs, emotional, psychological, spiritual, and everything. That that's a member. We can pray for the minister. You can support the uh, minister. And uh, he gave an example that really touched me because Apostle Paul said uh, he become a Greek to reach the Greek and each of those ones that he gave an example. He said there's a member in the church. I think she's uh, African American. This lady has dogs and cats. And Pastor Don needed to visit the the lady. Went to the house. Pastor Don, Don does not like cats nor dogs. So he visited, sitting in the living room. The dogs and the cats were lapping his hand and his pants. And he stayed there just to please the please the lady. We say when he got home, he took out that dress and he never wore he never wore the pants again. So I'm saying all of that just to say what the minister does most of the time for the members. Now that with your due permission, sir, uh, I'm, our regional overseer created uh, the pastor's welfare department, which by his grace, thank you, sir, he asked me to coordinate. And I know there are ministers that have need who have sent email for $200 per region. So I'm just using this just to make it, we're not just saying it, we are practicalizing it. It is very difficult, sir, to get money out of pastors, even in the region. I've been doing PR one-on-one, -on -one. outside of the email, I've been doing one-on-one. -on -one. So have been asking me why, and I have to explain. I'm saying all of that, and as I close, let me tell you my guiding principle when it comes to the work of God. God's work, God's people, God's money. Praise the Lord. So as uh, members, as pastor's wife, as ministers, it is God's work, it is God's people, and it is God's money. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Now, while we are on this, uh, if you are a pastor over a church, I want to say this. Pay attention here. Pastor Dennis, can you please stand up? If your water bill for the month increased by one hundred dollars, will you pay it? And they will have answer. Okay. But I will, yeah, I will pay for it. If you don't pay it, what will happen? They will cut off my my water. Okay. So whether their answer satisfies you or not. You see, pay. Yes. Thank you so much. You may sit down. I want to say that for too long a time, we will be muzzling the ox that treads the corn. Am I communicating? And I want to say that going forward by the grace of God, 
for the main pastor over the church will it be too much if we say that the church takes over your telephone bill and pay for you will, it be, will that be too much hello so I want to say that if you are a pastor over a parish going forward your church will take care of your phone bill If you can't humble your church to be in a position to pay that that is not your cup of tea, you drink it. I didn't say that we'll send the money to you from Washington. We need money here too. Do you understand? Amen. Are we together? You need internet for the church. And I'm saying because some of you, there are things you need to do, legitimate things for the church. And uh, because individual, you can't afford it. It's an issue. Why don't you get internet? Not all of you have your, uh, what do you call it now? Church, where you have things. Even if you have in the church, I don't know about you. 90% of what I do is for the church. If not 99%, I just want to be conservative. I have no other job. Amen. And as I was thinking of this, I thought of it for a minute. The church can get this internet for me. So, little little things that will help the work to move forward your phone if you are doing your job the way it ought to be done most of what you use that phone for should be for what the church your minister ministers welfare and i've told you before please i want to say it again if as a pastor you have a personal challenge for goodness sake, don't go to your church members. You'll be dishonoring and disrespecting yourself. If you have prayed and the problem is still there, please call me. Amen? We'll see how to work it out. Now, if you have to go for a conference like this, In the corporate world, if you are sent for conference, who pays for it? Let us speak now. The company pay for it. And some of you, because you don't have the money to buy a ticket, you cannot come. It's not right. Let your church pay for it. And in the name of If you are going for the conference, if your member has a problem, let them call me. If you are going for the conference, the hotel where you are going to stay, let the church pay for it. We are evolving. We are not, we are not born again to that level yet. Amen. If you don't have the money, it's a different thing. I'm talking of a, of a church. You don't expect another church to come and pay for your church. As you make your bed. So, if you have been running the church like I don't care before, <laughs> now is the time. You get what you pay for. How do you say it? You reap what you sow. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. All I'm saying is don't suffer alone as a pastor. Don't suffer alone. If there is anything, let us know what you are going through. And by God's grace, we'll be there for you. 
I'm not saying we'll do everything, but the little we can do, we will do it by God's grace. If your member has need, what do you do? A church member has a financial need. What do you do? Pastor Nako, what do you do? <laughs> 